Now we're going to look at what is arguably the most important part of your camera, and yet, depending on how you shoot, you might be almost totally unaware of it. That small part is your camera's built-in light meter. When you look through the viewfinder of most DSLR cameras, there's a little meter at the bottom that gives you an exposure reading. That is your camera's built-in light meter. On most cameras, the light meter is represented by a little graph in the viewfinder, like this. And the current exposure value is indicated by a little arrow or pointer of some kind. Here the pointer is showing minus one, meaning one stop underexposed. The exposure is considered correct when the arrow is at the center mark, the zero mark. That means the camera does not consider it underexposed or overexposed. Now on some cameras the meter is a bit more cryptic and it may look like this where you just have some little marks indicating one or two stops overexposed or underexposed and it uses a little series of markers extending out to the current exposure point. This is the traditional Nikon style. And you may notice that this is reversed. It's got the overexposure on the left and the underexposure on the right, which I think to many Westerners seems backwards. All of the Nikons I've used are like this, but it's my understanding that on newer cameras, they've flipped it around to be consistent with Canon and Sony and the others with the overexposure toward the right. In any case, if you have a Nikon and you want to reverse the meter, take a look at your manual. I know on some models it can be reversed. And finally, on some cameras there is no little graph at all. You may just see a number like plus one or minus one to indicate your exposure. For our illustrations, we'll use the more full-fledged meter because it's easier to read. If you shoot in full auto or one of the semi-automatic modes like aperture or shutter priority, you may be in the habit of ignoring the meter entirely, and you can usually get away with it. In fact, if you shoot with a fully automatic camera or a smartphone, you may never even see the meter at all, but it's still there behind the scenes doing its thing, you just don't see it. So what is the function of this built-in light meter? It's there to tell you when you have a proper exposure, and we'll talk about what the camera thinks is proper in just a moment. It's there to tell you if you have too much light or too little light or just the right amount of light in your photo. And as we've discussed, the amount of light in your photo is called the exposure. If there's too much light, it's called overexposed. If there's too little light, it's called underexposed. And if there's just the right amount of light, it's called a correct exposure. But who decides what's correct? By default, your camera's light meter does. Now, if you're shooting in full manual mode, then your light meter is just giving you advice on how to get a proper exposure. You don't have to take its advice. On the other hand, if you're shooting in one of the fully or semi-automatic modes like aperture, shutter, program mode, in that case the light meter is actually in the driver's seat and it's making exposure choices for you. It will do whatever it has to do to get that little pointer on the center mark whether you like it or not. So unless you decide to get creative and overrule the light meter, then that little meter is actually deciding everything about your exposure. It's the real eye and the real brain behind every one of your photos. So it's very important for us to understand how the light meter sees the world. The light meter in your camera is always trying to do one simple thing. It's trying to allow enough light to come into the camera to create an exposure level known as middle gray. This is also known as 18% gray for technical reasons that we don't need to go into. It's called middle gray because to human perception, it's a gray that's about halfway between black and white. The famous landscape photographer Ansel Adams helped define the zone system, which placed 18% gray in the middle. And to this day, that is still the standard by which all cameras are calibrated. So the light meter in your camera is always trying to create middle gray. If the light meter could have its way, every one of your photos would look like this. If you don't believe me, there's a little experiment you can do. I'm going to take a photo of two objects. I have a black card and a white card. And I'm gonna take a photo of each one with the camera in one of the semi-automatic modes. I'll do it in aperture priority mode, where the light meter is in charge of creating the exposure. So I'm just gonna prop I prop the card up there, and I'm going to zoom in so that it fills the frame. And take a picture of that. And it looks kind of gray. Now let's do it with the black card. Again, the camera is choosing the exposure, 
because it's in aperture priority. All the settings are the same for both photos. And once again, it looks like middle gray. The camera is always trying to create middle gray. Now, obviously, the real world is a little bit more complicated. Some parts of your scene are brighter, some parts of your scene are darker. So what your camera is trying to do is to average out the light bits and the dark bits so that it all averages out to middle gray. That's what your camera thinks is a proper exposure. The problem, of course, is that in the real world, not every scene looks best averaged out to middle gray. The classic example of this is what I think of as the wedding photo problem. People wearing black clothes or white clothes are often difficult to photograph because their clothing confuses your camera's light meter. Take a look at this photo, for example, of a bride in a white dress. Your goal as the photographer is to get her skin exposed properly. But how does the camera see this scene? The camera sees all of that white in the dress and it thinks this photo is terribly overexposed because it's so bright on average. And the meter may look something like this, indicating a one-stop or even a two-stop overexposure. So if you took the camera's advice, and if you adjusted your settings to get a neutral exposure, then you would get a photo like this where everything has been averaged down to neutral gray. But now the bride's skin is underexposed. Or here's the reverse situation, where we have a groom in a black tuxedo. Now, when the camera meter looks at this, it sees all that black and it thinks, oh, this is terribly underexposed. And the meter may show that it's one or two stops underexposed. And again, if you let the camera make the choice, it will increase the exposure to average it out to neutral gray, with the result that the man's face is now overexposed. Now, obviously, this does not only apply to wedding photos. It doesn't matter what you're shooting, whether it's landscapes or street photography or portraiture. There are many scenes that do not look best when averaged out to middle gray. There are some scenes where you want a lot of brightness, some scenes where you want a lot of darkness. But the camera is very simple-minded and it loves middle gray. So how do you overrule the camera when you know the exposure needs to be different? Well, first, if you're shooting in full manual mode, you control the aperture, the shutter, and the ISO. In that case, the camera's light meter is only giving you advice, and you're free to ignore the advice. In manual mode, you don't have to be a slave to the meter's opinion. It's just telling you how the camera sees the world through its middle gray obsession, and you're free to do with that information what you like. But what if you're not in full manual mode? What if you're in one of the semi-automatic modes, like aperture priority or shutter priority? Well, in that case, the camera is going to do whatever it takes to create a middle gray exposure. It's going to adjust either the aperture or the shutter to move that pointer right to the center of the scale and average everything out to middle gray, whether you like it or not. So how do you overrule the meter in that case and get the exposure that you want? Well, that's where exposure compensation comes in.